right, we got a sunny, bit of a sunny afternoon. Cold, as you can see, the pond actually iced over. I think it's November 8th or so. We were, we got an inch of snow. We were 15 degrees last night. It's probably 20, 25 today. Uh, pretty early for this kind of cold. Ground's freezing up. So what I've done is I've been cleaning out the shed. So I actually have some space to work this winter rather than working out where my hands tend to freeze. I've been moving everything I can into the trailer. So hopefully I got just enough space in this 8x10 that I can work out of the wind and not freeze my fingers. I'm sure anything I start in here is going to echo like heck, but we'll see. All right, I'm going to see if it starts up. Last time it was idling, uh, but when I hit the throttle, it was bogging out. So if it does that, we're going to play with the, play with the carbs a little bit. A little extra boost. Weak battery here. Uh, the sweet spot on this carb seems to be a one half turn out from fully seated on the fuel air mixture and then I've got the idle just adjusted right there and with that one half out we seem to have as smooth a response on the throttle as we can get however it does sound like I have an air leak down here at the exhaust head so I gotta let this cool and tighten that up So I've got three different carbs here. All three of these could go on this 110cc. The first one here, this is stock carb. Um, idle adjustment fuel air mixture here on the air side. This is a 20 millimeter carb, 48 millimeter mounting screws. And the choke is handled by this really this uh, full mechanism you see closing down on here. I've had trouble tuning these in. Um, for whatever reason, I can get them just right, and then they just bomb out, and I'll clean them, and they can be opened up. But uh, I've used these on a number of these small engines, uh, but I'm always having some trouble with them. I've had better luck with this one here. This is a uh, PZ22 model, so it's a 22 millimeter, still 48 millimeter through here. Instead of having threaded screw holes, you may need to get a longer set because it's going to go right through and then thread in on the back. Um, you have your idle adjust, you have your choke, 
and you have a fuel air mixture screw and this one is on the uh, fuel side I've had the best luck I've had is with these carbs the 22 millimeters they're just a little bit bigger card there's another one depending on how you're tuning up the motor that I've been playing with this is a VM 26 um, but you start to see the big difference 26 millimeter still 48 so it bolts right on and when you look at these side by side you see the difference in just the uh, diameter of where that fuel air mixture is shooting down into the engine I'm hoping to play with this guy a little bit more and see how it tunes in. I've heard of folks having good success with this as a performance carburetor. I've also seen a lot of guys bolt this on as the aftermarket upgrade for the Tau Taos. So right now this guy is idling and I'm able to get through mid-range to full. Seems all right, but I've just had bad luck, so we're going to see. Uh, but for now today I'm going to put these aside and I'm going to get pads on the back. because having rear brakes is a nice thing to do. So I do have a set of pads somewhere around here. Yeah. Yo, oh, fingers are still getting cold. All right, got a set of pads. So figured out when I was first getting into this, um, hit the rear brake and the rotor didn't stop. And I can see one pad in there, but not two. And with any luck, these little guys are just what I need. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get in here and see what I can do to get these pads on. So it's two six millimeter hex head. All right, so we did have one pad those brakes are just smoked you know what took me a little doing but i figured this out this sits in the cutout here there's the ears and grooves so i need this uh i need this single single pot here to get all the way out of the way so i can recess this in all right, I'm going to try to swap out the caliper. What we had on this one is there was only one rear um, pad. And it was really worn down. There's just about nothing left on that pad. But it had worn so much that the caliper was able to shift on the rotor. And the inside pad just lost. So I need to get the, the pot here far enough back so this other pad can sit in this recess. Uh, literally just goes in there and then settles down in. And this one was just neglected for so long that the pad just fell out. To get the other one out, you go at a kind of get it at an angle, and then you can get one side to slide, and you can swing it and lift it out. You won't be able to do both at the same time, but you should be able to shimmy one and then swing and get it. To protect the back of the caliper from my C clamp. Going to get a punch, part of a shim here. So my adjustable, this is a six inch C clamp. <clears throat> Fits right down inside the pot. And let's see. I think what we're going to have to do is let a little bit out of the master cylinder or bleed it a little bit so I can get that pot back in. Just a little bit. Here we go. A little bit more. I'm gonna get a rag because I don't really like having this stuff floating all over the floor. Dripping on all my tools. Almost there. 
I think we're starting to bottom out where that pot's going to go to. So now I have the, the clearance I need in there to set this new pad down in this groove. All right. There's one pad. I turn this back over. <clears throat> My spring clip sets down in there like so. Now I'm going to look to put my new pad back in. One side, swing it back over. Kind of do a kitty corner piece here. All right, that looks right. Spring sitting in, rest in front. So there's my clearance in the caliper. Ta-da, that's enough to get it back on. <clears throat> Now there are these two shims, and these shims will sit on the other side of the bolt like that to hold the caliper the right distance from the rotor. All right, so if you do this, <clears throat> pay attention to these spacers right at the end of my finger there. So this 8 mil bolt goes through the chassis through this spacer and then finally the threads are on the caliper itself and that gets the distancing correct between the rotor uh, and the caliper so don't miss those there's one on this side and the other six mil bolt down the bottom also remember when you're bleeding don't let your master reservoir go empty so open this up pour some fluid in this one was bone dry so when I was pumping it there was no action on the pads and then uh, open your bleeder depress the brake before you let go of the brake close the bleeder and then when you let go of the brake it'll pull the fluid back down in so I was able to bend these this guy was uh this guy was bent kind of like that humped in the middle with my hands I was able to bend this plate back the lower it still slopes out the lower part attached to the frame is still bent down uh, both sides kind of out so probably from adults jumping and landing on so I want to bring those up It'd be neat if I could reinforce them I'm not sure I know how to do that but I think the next step is going to be tighten uh, the head bolts see if those are loose up there for the exhaust because uh, that play uh, I don't like that play so I'm going to work on that for a little bit all right for the time being for the time being, I've taken the starter switch off the headlight. Low beams do work. Uh, I'm going to put the starter switch somewhere up here, closer. Ah, sparky, sparky, close to the gas tank. That sounds great. Um, yeah, let's let's not. Yeah, it'll be fine. Although, I can see if I do that when I go to turn my... Uh, Turn my handlebars, I'm probably going to yank on these wires. Uh, I want this somewhere out of the way for the time being. There we go, what could go wrong? This will all have to get moved when the plastics go back on. Or you know what, maybe the plastics don't go back on. Maybe we just Mad Max this thing. There we go, crank case breather. Voila! Now what can I do with my battery box so I can go take a ride? I need a place to zip tie this for the time being. This feels like it's the, again with the what could go wrong.
first thing I did pull it out here was bottom it out on a stump. I think I caught the uh, brake pedal. There's only like two inches of clearance. These tires are 14 inch, 145 on seven inch diameter rims, six inch wide, three bolt pattern. We need to get these up to 16s. Front looks to be the same, 145 on seven six. Also three hole bolt, so all the same. The carb is still a challenge. Coming off idle, it's gonna stall out until I go wide open. And then it wants to take off. I need mid-range. So I've got exhaust is good, brakes are good. Time to do something about the carb. And I'm gonna oil these shocks while I have this out here. I don't actually think that these shocks have any oil or fluid in them. I think it's literally just springs. seems to be working that's a quarter turnout on the fuel air mixture quarter turn all that much uh, difference all right well that's where I'm gonna park it for today more to do um, but for now I'm gonna leave it there figure out the next steps mm -hmm.